This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, high winds and hot temperatures keep fire crews busy as a large blaze burns homes on Saddle Hill. The threat of a mass shooting keeps students away from campus despite an increased police presence. And fast free public Wi-Fi is launched in the Octagon, but it's only one part of a much bigger project. Good evening Dunedin, I'm Rebecca Dupree. Fire crews are battling a large blaze on Saddle Hill which is burning through houses. Firefighters from across the city are working to control the situation, but the weather is against them. A highway disappearing under smoke. Saddle Hill's on fire and residents are being evacuated. The area is being completely closed off to traffic with authorities manning cordons at different entry points. It's believed the fire has spread to several houses. Some pet animals have also been evacuated from homes. At least one resident has reportedly needed medical attention for smoke inhalation. Access to the area has been restricted. There's a cordon in place at the Quarry Road and Brayside intersection, limiting access. Several appliances and a helicopter are at the scene, battling the ongoing spreading blaze. It's believed the fire started about 1.30 this afternoon, but authorities aren't able to say how at this stage. The blaze has been fuelled by strong winds and warm temperatures. The City Council's lost power to some of its water pumps as a result of the fire. Residents in Mosgiel, Brayside and Kinmont are being asked to conserve water as a precaution until further notice. Fire crews in the wider area are being stretched, with another large blaze in Dunbag. All residents are asked to follow the instructions of emergency services. Annabelle Dick, 39 Dunedin News. And the Southern motorway, motorway could be closed as authorities continue to monitor the situation. Dunedin City Council staff are preparing to make their submission on the government's latest petroleum block offer. A high level of interest in the offer has seen council staff extend the deadline for public feedback by a week. The block offer allows petroleum companies to bid for exploration rights to assess natural stores of oil and gas. In the past, that has been opposed by many residents as well as local protest group Oil Free Otago. Residents are not permitted to lodge their own formal submissions on the issue, and that's why the council has invited feedback to be included in its submission. University of Otago students have been steering clear of campus following an online threat. The origin and authenticity of the mass shooting threat earlier this week is still being investigated by police. But an increased police presence doesn't seem to be enough reassurance for some. A quiet day in the student quarter. University of Otago students have been hiding behind closed doors and out of sight due to a threat that's being addressed by authorities. Police are continuing our investigation into a threat made against the University of Otago and as yet we're still to identify the origin and authenticity of the post. A number of our police staff will be maintaining a visible presence in the wider university area across today. The university is still open for business but campus has been virtually empty. Most students are in study mode preparing for exams, although the odd class is running. Police say all threats of this kind are taken seriously and they're urging people to stay calm. We do ask students and staff to remain alert and vigilant, but not be alarmed as we continue to look into the authenticity of this post. It's the first threat of this kind for local police. They won't discuss all the steps they're taking locally and nationally to get to the bottom of it. The Wellington-based high-tech crime groups on the case and police are working with university management to provide support. Campus Watch are uh, working in conjunction with the plan that we have in place around our high visibility patrolling. Uh, so they're working closely with us in terms of deployment and providing that reassurance to the students in the greater campus area. An increased police presence on campus will be maintained until there's no longer considered to be a threat. Staff and students will continue to be advised as the investigation progresses. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. And threats have also been made at Victoria University in Wellington and Massey University in Palmerston North. 
Locals are being warned to watch out for falling tree branches and damaged power lines as strong winds continue to whip the city. Electricity is being cut to parts of Outram, Allenton and Berwick. A couple of hundred consumers are affected. Delta crews are unable to restore power in some cases until winds die down. The company says residents should prepare for further outages. All power lines and electrical equipment should be treated as live. The city is now believed to boast the fastest free public internet in the country. It's just been launched in the Octagon as part of a bigger technology project and more benefits are expected. Logging on with record speed. Internet users are making the most of free ultra-fast broadband in the Octagon, launched today. It's part of the plan for Dunedin to become what's called a smart city as the winner of Gigatown. Well, Gig City's all about Dunedin moving into the 21st century. Free internet in the Octagon's now up to 50 times faster than it was before. It's believed to be the country's fastest free public Wi-Fi. It shows you the power of this new technology that we now have available at our fingertips. There are other projects happening alongside the Wi-Fi launch. Half a million dollars is available to people starting up business projects by using the city's gig technology. From Saturday, they'll be able to apply for grants of up to $20,000. And that's to help very, very new start-up businesses get going. So there's lots happening around sort of developing a new culture, you know, all about the fact that we can now communicate with anywhere in the world at, at almost instantaneous speed. And that's a huge advantage to a city like Dunedin. Already some benefits are being seen with local companies taking advantage of the technology. The city's expected to attract more business as a result, at least until the rest of the country catches up. Rosie Mannins, 39, Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, changes are proposed to early childhood education, but will they make a difference? And we find out why imperfect sight is no longer a stumbling block for some Moleskill residents. Mobility scooters of Targo, mobility scooters, new and used, electric manual wheelchairs, strollers and walkers, free home demonstration and delivery. Call Tony on 03 455 2875 or visit our showroom, 211 King Edward Street, opposite Westpac. Active Furnishers Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishers Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Wake up time and another frantic day ahead for Haraway's Oat Singles. With three delicious flavours in each pack, they don't last long with this family. They're so convenient and tasty and they're ready in seconds. Haraway's Oat Singles are the ideal breakfast or snack on the run for today's busy families. And there's a flavour to suit everyone. Beat the rush and make sure you get your favourite flavour. Haraway's Oat Singles. Try new Kiwi Favourites Caramel Variety Pack. Mosgiel Mowers Plus can help you with products to make your garden maintenance jobs easier. Lawn mowers, ride-ons, chainsaws, line trimmers. Sales and service are our specialty. Mosgiel Mowers Plus. Phone 489-3572-22B Gordon Road, Mosgiel. Are you within your legal rights to take one life in order to save another? Welcome to the ambiguities of law. Because whilst the law may be clear, there is still room for both yes and no. What? No! The decision will depend on logical thinking and the art of argument. And this is what we learn at New Zealand's first and world-renowned law faculty. You can stop now. I'm Latifale and this is my place in the world. Take your place in the world. Big Orange for all your movies, records, books and games. Pre-loved needs and vinyl records, 45s, DVDs. A South Dunedin family-owned business for over 15 years. Check us out on Facebook. Opposite Westpac on the sunny side of King Edward Street. 
At your locally owned and operated Veggie Boy store, we've got fresh produce daily, fruit, veggies and more. Competitive prices are just one of the reasons people come to us in all seasons. Convenient locations and friendly crew, Veggie Boys Dunedin, come try something new. Stores in the north, the south, be our guest, centre city as well to serve you the best. Daily specials on produce that are hard to beat, all tasty and healthy and all good to eat. Don't forget, we've also got your milk, bread and meat, Veggie Boys Dunedin, your guaranteed a treat. It is a very tragic death, a very painful death, a very prolonged death, and certainly nothing that needs to happen. It's not part of our anatomy that people like to think about that much, but actually we need to. People don't know the symptoms, about half of people you ask don't know the symptoms of the disease, and that makes them very much at risk of dying from the disease or having a much poorer outcome because the disease is very curable if it's caught early. Welcome back. Two of the country's largest unions have merged under a new name. The newly formed union is called Etu, which means stand tall in Māori. It's the amalgamation of the Engineering, Printing and Manufacturing Union and the Service and Food Workers Union. Together they have about 50,000 members who were asked to vote on the merger the change has been three years in the making. And on that note, let's take a look at today's financials. The NZX50 has closed the day down 18 points. It's now at 5,650. The FTSE is up 27 points. And to the exchange rates, and the Kiwi dollar is up against the major currencies that we follow. The government is proposing to make changes to early childhood education. That is being welcomed by local academics, including Dr Alex Gunn of the University of Otago's College of Education. And she's here to explain why the changes will bring benefits. Good evening. Sure do. What are the main changes that are being proposed? Well, there's three sets of uh, recommendations in this report, Rebecca. Um, one of them uh, deals with teacher professional development and learning in early childhood education. It's asking um, teachers to form communities of learning uh, and professional development. There's a second suite of recommendations around how children start school and they're possibly the most exciting um, moves signalled in this report. And then there are other recommendations about things like scholarships for uh, fluent te reo Māori speakers who want to teach or people who are fluent in Pacifica languages. Now how will these changes help children? Well, um, if I can talk about this entry to school um, recommendations, as I said, I think they're the most exciting. Um, one of the report's recommendations is that schools might like to start uh, reception classes or transition to school classes. Now, as we know now, children come to school usually on their fifth birthday and they're in year zero and after a period of time they'll move into year one. Um, but we're wanting to extend the amount of time that children spend in reception before they move into that first formal year of schooling. And so this would allow teachers to work on a much more flexible transition plan for children. It would help um, uh, teachers uh, enculturate children into schooling, get them more familiar with the social and cultural aspects of schooling before they're subjected to some of that formal teaching at year one of the curriculum. Mm. What changes will uh, early childhood teachers have to encounter? Mm. Well, some of the exciting changes for them would, is, are around the professional learning and development communities. So right now, it's, it's often difficult for uh, early childhood teachers to be able to work together closely over long periods of time on areas of professional development because there's not the infrastructure there to support that. Mm. And so uh, that element of the recommendations is very exciting because um, it would allow teachers to plan with their communities for the kinds of development work they want to do. Um, I think also early childhood teachers would become more recognised by their schooling counterparts for the strength and expertise they have uh, in, in, in young children's education. And because it's asking teachers in both of those sectors to work together, um, I think uh, early childhood teachers would recognise the value in early years schooling and vice versa as well. Will the changes be difficult or costly to implement? Well, th there certainly will be costs involved, that's for sure. And right now the government's remit around funding uh, for professional development in early childhood is quite narrow. So they're going to have to reappropriate that fund and certainly top it up quite a lot, I'd suggest. Mm -hmm. 
Um, <clears throat> but in terms of the complexity of implementing, uh, the re re report has asked um, schools to consider on their own terms with their communities whether they would like to uh, consider the reception class idea. And so it, m it might be quite manageable in terms of the local, you know, on the ground work that's necessary. Is this a groundbreaking move from the government? No, I, th I really think it is. Um, you know, it'll go a long way to uh, breaking down those divisions between early years schooling and early childhood education. Um, it certainly uh, puts a focus back on children and families much more rather than the institution, you know, and I think that's a really good move. When are we likely to see any changes if they're adopted? Yes, so that's the million dollar question. Of course, mm. uh, this is a set of recommendations in a report and so um, the government would need to uh, consider uh, how it was able to fund those recommendations over time. Thankfully, the report's writers actually put a staged implementation plan um, across three years for the report's recommendations. So, you know, that would allow government to pick up some things quite quickly, but actually take a more considered response to find the funding for the rest of them. Dr Alex Gunn from the College of Education, thanks very much for your time. Kia ora, thank you. After the break on 39 Dunedin News, why vision impairment won't be quite so debilitating for Mosgiel residents and we'll find out whether or not you think more needs to be done to help smokers quit. Sir Bob Charles, New Zealand's greatest golfer and still going strong. I'm sure that Sportsville was a contributing factor to my success and I'll continue to use it. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville, a product so good he puts his name to it. Well I believe Sportsville helps maintain your quality of life. Now being used by active men and women globally to support strength and mobility. It works for me. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville in the new all black pack. Call now for the Sportsville special 0800 502 402. Hedges are something we almost take for granted. A good hedge needs regular maintenance to look its best and to add value and character to your property. For all your hedge care needs, call the team at SGC Services on 0800 783 453. She's 21 metres long with a 6.7 metre beam. She can support diving, seafloor mapping and sampling, deep water measurements and has onboard laboratories. She has a range of a thousand nautical miles, which means the Polaris 2 can take your studies further than you ever thought possible. My name's Will Raymond, and this is my place in the world. Take your place in the world. McClellan Refrigeration is your one-stop shop for heat pumps in Dunedin. We have a range of heating, air conditioning and refrigeration solutions. We also have 20 years experience. McClellan Refrigeration, call us on 477-0088. Pallet fires are growing in popularity in Otago with people who want a clean and efficient form of home heating. The sight of a burning flame without the problems of chopping, stacking and carting wood around is a winner. Pallet fires, so easy, so efficient. Big Orange, for all your movies, records, books and games. Pre-loved needs and vinyl records, 45s, DVDs. A South Dunedin family owned business for over 15 years. Check us out on Facebook, opposite Westpac on the sunny side of King Edward Street. At your locally owned and operated Veggie Boy store, we've got fresh produce daily, fruit, veggies and more. Competitive prices are just one of the reasons people come to us in all seasons. Convenient locations and friendly crew, Veggie Boys Dunedin, come try something new. Stores in the north, the south, be our guests, centre city as well to serve you the best. Daily specials on produce that are hard to beat, all tasty and healthy and all good to eat. Don't forget we've also got your milk, bread and meat, Veggie Boys Dunedin, your guaranteed a treat. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Pregnant? Need to talk? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. Hello, I'm Dougal Stevenson. Welcome to Museum Diaries, the programme where we showcase the rare and wonderful treasures of the Otago Museum, many of which you don't normally see. On the show we find out about crayfish, wasps and gummy sharks. 
Scott Reeves brings in weapons from the Indian subcontinent. We discuss the impact introduced mammals have on New Zealand's native wildlife. And we talk preventive conservation with Lisa Yates. Welcome back. Police are worried about a recent increase in criminal activity around St. Clair. The latest incident occurred yesterday in Surrey Street, where a car was broken into and a wallet stolen. It's believed petrol was also siphoned from the car. The theft follows another incident in Surrey Street earlier this week, in which a car was almost stolen. It was moved from a driveway into the middle of the road, and police suspect the thief fled when the steering wheel locked. Life is getting easier for Mosgiel residents who don't have perfect sight. The Visual Impairment Trust is now offering support services to the wider community and some specialists are being recruited to help. Making a stand for the visually impaired. These Mosgiel residents have had their calls answered. They now have a support network so they can share tips and vent their frustrations. Vision impairment is very widespread and particularly among older people it creeps up on them quite often. They might think, oh I need new glasses, I'm having trouble reading the paper and they go to the optometrist and get told, no, new glasses can't fix this, you've got an incurable condition that's going to get worse. Locals now have the opportunity to meet others in similar situations, with group meetings being held each month. Victor is advocating for more services and the government is starting to take notice. We've got a national trust now because it's a nationwide problem and we're working to get low vision clinics re-established in public hospitals. There used to be 10 throughout the country, now only two are left despite the growing population of people with low vision. For now they're trying to do what they can within the community. They're recruiting the help of some occupational therapy students who will be running iPad courses. So that's really focusing on using the different apps that, um, that kind of enable people with low vision to read, to use maps, to magnify pictures, to record messages and send those. It's early days for the group but members are hoping it'll kick off and become more permanent to create a real change. Annabelle Dick, 39 Dunedin News. Smoking is still the biggest cause of premature death in New Zealand and locals are being encouraged to kick the bad habit. It's part of the nationwide Stop Toba campaign being run by healthcare providers. And with that in mind, our Word on the Street team asked members of the public if more should be done to help smokers quit. Well, my father died of lung cancer long before we knew about smoking, but he still gave up smoking the minute he knew. Yeah, I reckon like uh, doctors and pharmacists should supply like free medication for helping them to quit smoking. I think that would really help. That would be very good. As I said, my son's a smoker, so I'd love him to have all the help he could have. And it's this guy's daddy, so that would be nice. As you know, smoking is bad for you, so um, yeah, I reckon. But some people are addicted to it, so it's probably pretty hard for them to stop. I think they're getting enough help at the moment. I think there's a lot of advertising done to um, try and reduce the young people smoking. But yes, I'd love to see a little bit more probably. There should be like um, posters uh, on the streets saying what are the risks involved in when you're smoking. Like, you know, you can have lung cancers and sort of like that and um, vein problems. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. Fire crews are battling a large blaze on Saddle Hill which is spreading through houses and causing residents to be evacuated. Most University of Otago students have been steering clear of campus due to a shooting threat which is being investigated by police. And free internet in the Octagon is now up to 50 times faster thanks to a project to make Dunedin a leading city for technology. Well now it's time to take a look at what's going to be on the pages of tomorrow's Otago Daily Times. And Phil Somerville is here, complete with picture. Good yes, evening, hi Phil. Rebecca. This is just one I grabbed early on. We've got three or four photographers coming back from the big fires out Saddle Hill Way. Uh, this is a picture from the, the top of the motorway, just to the bridge where you come up from Mosgiel. 
You can see a car on the motorway and in here is a fire truck, these trees ablaze. And not long after that, the fire leapt the motorway. And as we know, lots of flights cancelled, people without power, mm. people evacuated, um, putting out fires right in the midst of houses. So it's been quite a dramatic afternoon. It has indeed. Lots on that. It was quiet as we know at the university. Uh, we've got a story covering that and uh, looking at the issue of um, whether they can track down the perpetrator of the threat. So that'll be interesting. On to page two, inside two in the wash. Uh, we had the wonderful mural picture today of the St George Jam Factory. Now, uh, younger people mightn't realise, but the St George Factory was one of Dunedin's biggest businesses and a household name throughout New Zealand. And the Dave Cannon in the wash has gone into some of the history of that. Opinion page, I'll mention that as well. Uh, Joe Bennett runs on Thursday, and by gosh, he is a very, very good writer. So take your time and read his column. You'll enjoy it. That's tomorrow's ODT. Thank you, Phil. Time now for local weather. This local weather report proudly brought you in association with Silverhorn Sportsville. And here is tonight's City View. It's taken off. You can't quite see it, but rain on pine trees. Well, around the city today at 3 o'clock, 27 degrees for the central city and the Tyree, 28 for the gardens, and that was just before the sou'wester rolled in. Well, to the situation, that trough of low pressure is over us now, but uh, afterwards we're going to be back to the west to sou'west flow. To the forecast for some of the main towns in the Lower South Island for tomorrow, becoming fine with sou'westers for Invercargill, Gore, Tiano and Alexandra, highs of around 14 or 15 degrees. Becoming fine with uh, sou'westers for Queenstown, Wanaka and Twizel. A few showers are on the cards for Omaru with sou'west winds, 14 degrees there. In Dunedin tonight, showers and cold sou'westers with a low of 6. The showers will clear tomorrow, sunny periods will increase, cool sou'westers will slowly die out but just 12 degrees expected. And on Friday, fine and sunny with westerlies freshening at a high of 16. And to the Otago Pallet Fires tidal and fishing information, a low tide tomorrow morning is at 10 to 8, high tide follows at 20 to 2. And fishing conditions look reasonable tomorrow, particularly around 10 to 10 in the morning. And that is all from the team here at 39 Dunedin News for Wednesday. We'll join you again tomorrow. Good night. This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.